Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be doing another Kahoot. I'm going to be going over defense mechanisms, a little bit of anxiety, and a little bit of phobias. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video, subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already, and press that red notification button so you'll be notified every single time a new video is released. Don't forget, I'm now offering next generation NCLEX reviews. I'm offering one one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions and consultations. And as always, you can grab yourself some audio lessons. All could be found on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. To book a review or to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation or tutoring session, session nexusnursinginstitute.com. Also, almost daily, you can find me covering a variety of nursing topics on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So be sure to check me out there. All right, guys, let's get started. Defense mechanisms and phobias. A woman whose husband died three years ago, but she still talks about him in the present tense and she still keeps his clothes in the closet. What do you think that is? Denial, displacement, dissociation, or projection? What do you guys say? If you guys didn't make it into the room, you can type in your answers on the live. You can still participate. Good. It's denial. So denial is when a person has these strong feelings that they avoid because it's too painful for them. So because it's too painful for them, painful for them, they just ignore the reality. And it's not like they're doing it on purpose. This is something that they're doing subconsciously. This is denial. True or false? Denial involves escaping unpleasant thoughts or subjects by ignoring their existence. True or false? Very true. True or false? A phobia is an overwhelming, irrational fear of something. True or false? A phobia. True. And not only is that fear overwhelming, it's incapacitating. So normal things that uh, the person would like to do in their everyday life, because that fear is so overwhelming, they may avoid things that usually would have brought them pleasure because they want to avoid whatever it is that they have the phobia with. What is a clinical name for the fear of being alone? Is it zoophobia, xenophobia, monophobia, or pyrophobia? Mono, it's mono, they have a fear of being alone. What's the unconscious process of substituting socially acceptable activities with unacceptable impulses? So this person has impulses that is not accepted by society. It's rejected from society. So they turn to something else that is approved by society. What is that called? Is it called projection, denial, displacement, or sublimation?
All right, guys, it's called sublimation. So an example is a man that has these lustful thoughts that he wants to attack a woman or he wants to harm a woman. He wants to physically do something to a woman. Well, you know, that's frowned on, right? Society frowns upon that. Assault, you'll go to jail. So instead of doing that, he puts all of that energy towards boxing, where people who are good boxer, boxers, they get paid, they get praised, they get recognition. So whenever somebody has um, an impulse or desire that is not approved by society, it's unacceptable, and they channel that energy towards something that is socially acceptable, that is known as sub sublimation. True or false? The fear of animals is known as zoophobia. Is this true or is this false? Aqua on the live said sublimation. You think of substituting. Very good. I never thought about that, but that's awesome. Okay, guys, the fear of animals known as zoophobia. Absolutely. That is true. Thinking of, think of a zoo. Animals are in the zoo. Zoophobia. The unconscious rejection of emotionally unacceptable features and attributing them to someone else. What's that? Is that dissociation? Projection? rationalization or sublimation? So the unconscious rejection of emotionally unacceptable feature and you're putting those features onto someone else. What is that called? That's called projection. Perfect example. You know, I'm petty, so I'm going to break this up. That student the day before yesterday that decided to comment on my page, I didn't know what I was talking about. The material that I go over is irrelevant. It's not on NCLEX. It's not on, in the nursing programs. It's not on quizzes, right? So this student, they felt inferior. They're not passing their classes. They're not doing well. They're the one that doesn't know anything, right? But that feeling of inferiority it's not acceptable to oneself. So what do you do? You project your emotions onto somebody else. So all of those feelings of inadequacy, he did what? He projected them onto me to tell me that I don't know anything when he's the one who feels like he doesn't know anything. You know, I'm petty. You know, I had to bring that up, but that is a perfect example. Okay. Projecting when someone has an, um, and an emotion that is unacceptable to them. They can't handle that emotion. And so they put that same emotion onto somebody else. They project their own emotions onto someone else. That is projection. True or false? Acrophobia is the fear of closed spaces. Is that true or is that false? I hope they are listening. The people on the live, they someone said they hope that person's listening. <laughs> All right, acrophobia. That's false. Very good. I thought I was going to trick you guys with the acrophobia. So that's false. It's not a fear of closed spaces. Acrophobia is a fear of heights. If we wanted to talk about a fear of closed spaces, that would be what? Claustrophobia. Claustrophobia is a fear of closed spaces, but a fear of heights is called acrophobia. Very good. Reverting back to an earlier, safer, and less stressful time in life. What is that known as? Is that regression, reaction formation, projection, or denial? I'm sorry, Kahoot does not um, count the answers in the chat. This is just for uh, your participation. It doesn't count. Guys, if you see me looking over to the left, I have a live going on TikTok while I'm making this YouTube video for you. Okay, the correct answer is regression. So whenever um, the defense mechanism of regression is that when the person anxiety starts to rise, they want to go back to, to a time where they felt safe, where they felt protected, 
where, you know, they were less stressed. So an example is an eight-year-old child who's been an only child in the home. Now mom comes home with a new baby and everyone's bringing gifts for the baby and paying attention to the baby. And now this eight-year-old is wondering, okay, where's my place in the family now? And so they may start to regress. They may start to wet the bed at night. They may start crawling on the ground as if they were a baby. They're regressing to a time where they felt safer and less stressed. True or false? The conscious denial of a disturbing situation or feeling is known as suppression. Is this true or is this false? It's true. So let's talk about the difference, guys between denial and suppression. When it comes to denial, the person is unconsciously avoiding those feelings that are hurting them. But when it comes to suppression, they're doing it on purpose. And an example is, um, I, as you can see, the picture that I just showed is a women's soccer team that they just won. Well, an example is the um, leader of that soccer team. She's about to go play a game that is very important. And right before she went to go play that game, she walked into her house and she found her husband in bed with somebody else. But she has a game that she has to focus on. So guess what she decides to do? She decides to not even think about that situation, pretend like it didn't even happen because she has to focus on the game. And after she focuses on that game and she wins that game, then she's going to go back home and kick her husband out. So that conscious decision to ignore those overwhelming feelings, that is no, what's known as suppression. When a patient is in denial, they're not even doing it on purpose. It is unconscious, okay? That's a big difference you need to be aware of. A man gets yelled at by his boss at work and he does nothing about it. But as soon as he gets home, he kicks the family dog. Look at this poor dog. He didn't even do anything to anybody. What is this an example of? Is it displacement? Reaction formation, suppression, or sublimation? Very good, it's displacement. His anger is displaced. So when it comes to the defense mechanism of displacement, where that anger or hostility or frustration or irritability, whatever it is, that feeling that the person has, the place that it should be directed, it's fearful for the person to direct their fear or their anger or their agitation. So what they do is they choose someone or something that's less threatening to them. And then they direct that anger or frustration or hostility towards the person or the thing. So the guy who went to work, he got yelled at by his boss, but he knows if he pops off on his boss, he's going to lose his job, right? Or he might get written up. So he doesn't say anything, but then he goes home and he kicks that poor dog. They didn't even do anything to him. So his anger is displaced. Those emotions really are for the boss at work, but because the boss is threatening, he found a safer object, which was a dog to, you know, release that pent up energy. So that's what displacement is. Behaving the opposite way of how you really feel. Is that sublimation, regression, reaction formation, or suppression? So you hate your instructor. You can't stand your instructor, but you always tell your nursing stu your students, you always tell your classmates how that instructor is your favorite instructor. You're always bringing, you know, cups of coffee or gifts to that instructor, but deep down in your heart, you can't stand them. You hate them. You can't wait for the class to be over. Behaving the opposite of how you feel. What is that? Very good reaction formation. That is behaving the opposite of what we feel. Remember, sublimation is taking um, 
impulses or feelings that's not accepted by society and channeling them into something that's accepted by society. Regression is going back to a time where you felt safer and suppression is purposely avoiding or ignoring a hurtful thought or feeling because you have to focus on something else. True or false? Mild anxiety is a good thing because it heightens perceptual fields and it helps you to focus. Is that true? When it comes to mild anxiety, is it a good thing? True or false? True. Mild anxiety is a good thing. As nursing students, you have that mild anxiety when you have a quiz or a test or midterm or final coming up. And that mild anxiety is what causes you to turn off the TV and open up your books and start studying or go to Professor D's YouTube and watch a video because the anxiety is uh, um, making you want to do something about it. Mild anxiety is a good thing for a woman, a young woman that's walking to her car at night. It's dark right? She's going to have mild anxiety. And so it kind of makes her aware of her surroundings. She's hurrying to get to her car, any little sound, and she's jumping because she's more aware. Mild anxiety is a good thing. True or false? When someone's in a panic, you must provide lengthy step-by-step -step detailed instructions. Is that true or is that false? Okay, I see you guys are half and half on the live. Half are you saying true, half are saying false. And the correct answer is false. That is false. Let me tell you something. You see how we just talked about mild anxiety? That is one end of the spectrum. Panic is the complete opposite end of the spectrum. If the patient got to the point where they're in panic mode, they are very likely out of touch with reality. Okay. They cannot process their thoughts. So that is not the time to be giving them, uh, uh, instructions, very lengthy and detailed instructions because they can't pa uh, process those thoughts. They are in a panic. If you want that patient to move to the left, you have to physically grab their arm gently and move them to the left, telling them to come with you and to move to the left. They cannot process those directions when they are in a panic. Okay. Panic is not good. When the patient's gotten that far, they cannot process thoughts. So it doesn't make any sense to give them detailed instructions because they're not going to listen to you. They can't. Last question. Select all that applies. What are important nursing interventions for someone with anxiety disorder? Select all that applies. Don't forget guys, when it comes to select all that applies, you're going to treat them as true or false. So what are important nursing interventions for someone with anxiety disorder? Stay with the patient, speak in short, simple sentences, decrease stimuli, have long, detailed instructions, confront the patient about their rational thoughts, or Professor D, I have no clue, I give up at this point. What are important nursing interventions for the patient with anxiety disorder? Okay, so let's go over. When the patient has anxiety disorder, we're not talking about panic. We're talking about anxiety disorder. What are some important nursing interventions? Stay with them. The patient's feeling anxious. Your presence gives them a sense of security. Stay with the patient and speak to them in a calm way in very short and simple sentences. Remember, they're not in panic mode, so they can process thoughts, but um, you don't want to give them long detailed instructions because that can increase their anxiety. Make sure that your, uh, sentences are very short and simple. You want to decrease stimuli. They're already anxious. That's not the time to have, um, bright lights and loud music or background playing, right? You want to decrease the stimuli to help decrease their anxiety level. You don't want to provide long detailed instructions. You're going to make them more nervous. 
You don't want to confront them about their irrational thoughts. Let me tell you something. Whenever you see a test question about confronting, that's not your answer. We don't confront patients in nursing. So that's false. And one person shows, I have no clue. I give up. At least you were honest. So guys, um, this was the video for phobia, anxiety, and, um, and defense mechanisms. So please let me know what you guys thought about this video. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please, in the comment section, let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover next or in the future. Don't forget, I'm now offering next generation NCLEX review sessions and one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions. You can reserve your spot right now if you go to my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching, and you guys will catch me on the next video.